I dangle here. This is a request uh, review of Future Quest number one from DC Comics. Recent series just just launched uh, this year, 2016, from DC Comics. As you can see, there's a little Hanna Barbera there. Now, um, I did a little bit of research on Fu Future Quest. It started as a cartoon series originally back in the 60s by Hanna Barbera. And uh, it ran from for a couple more comic series over the years since that time. And it focused on the main character, Johnny Quest, which is a young sort of teenage boy, and his father, uh, I'm not sure if it's like Dr. Quest or something like that, to, um, they have various adventures through time, and what, I'm not sure it's through time, but they have various adventures with another bloke, the one bloke called Race, and the... Uh, Indian bloke, the Indian lad, another teen, uh, a picture of him, Haji, Haji there they are, there's Johnny Quest and there's Haji there, he's the uh, sort of Indian sort of fellow, Amer uh, Asian Indian sort of fellow. Now this, this review is on Future Quest number one, recently launched from DC just a few months back. Just recently, and um, you, you'd think with um, it's not set in the DC universe; it's a, a standalone sort of universe, which is set in just a Future Quest universe. So it's not part of the Superman, Batman sort of Justice League world of, of comics. It's a standalone title from DC, part of sort of um, the um, Hanna Barbera sort of kids line, I suppose, but sort of younger readers line of comics from DC, which are standalone, like. Um, the Flintstones, which they're running, and uh, Scooby Apocalypse, and uh, the Looney Tunes stuff, and things like that. It's sort of other comics from DC, which are the standard superhero titles or the Vertigo titles. It's a standalone title in that sense. And um, uh, I remember growing up, Future Quest, uh, seeing a little bit about it advertised, possibly in comics or on TV or something, the comics, the cartoon series, and uh, I never saw any of it, but uh, it was something that I'd known about. It always a appeared to me to be a little bit uh, for younger people and nothing too spectacular, only for a younger sort of kid. But I've read Future Quest number one. I read it a few days back. And what was probably surprising about this comic is that it's actually quite an intelligent comic. And um, if, if there's one thing I would say, it's not really for younger readers. The, the, uh, the concepts are probably between audience the uh, late teens, twenties, thirties audience, which DC usually aims for, so it's um it's it's probably a comic for for an older reader for the most part. I mean, the big comics are usually your Justice Leagues and your Batman's and your X Men and your Spider Man and your Avengers and all stuff like that. They're the big sellers, and this uh, number one did okay on the charts because I checked it on the charts. It made top fifty, I think, um, and sold a fair amount of copies. Future Quest number one. But DC and myself will probably expect it to drop right down with number two. And by number eight, if it gets that far, it'll probably be quite a low seller of about 17, 18,000 copies. Maybe somewhere around there. That's the normal expectation. But, um, I would, personally what I would think. But, um, this is actually a very good action comic. It, it, it reminds me a little bit like James Bond. It's that sort of adventure style of things. There's a bit of a, a scene from it where, um... It's, I think it's aliens or something who are coming to Earth and they're um, chasing down some some artifacts or some, which come from a vortex, which which the aliens are after, and which Doctor Quest is investigating to try and try and collect and understand as well. Now the the um the, there's sort of techy science fictiony concepts in there. A lot of a lot of um sort of you know pretty pretty interesting stuff. There's a main villain guy who's Doctor Zinn, very original. And the artwork they've used for Doctor Z the Zin stuff is classic red and red and black and white sort of colours, sort of because he's in China, I think it is, and um, classic sort of colour schemes they use for the pages of Doctor Zin, and it, it's very similar to a James Bondy sort of adventure sort of comic. Um, it, it 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 kept my interest the whole comic all the way through. It read very well. It read uh, maturely enough and intelligently enough. And it was a pretty good action adventure sort of comic. It's it's not I'm not sure if it's exactly what I expected from Future Quest number one. I thought I'd read it because I'm committing to reading all the DC comics now. But it was uh, it was definitely a good read. 
you know, if you're a standard comic reader, a normal comic collector, and you're thinking, would I bother with Future Quest? Well, yeah. Yeah, you would bother with Future Quest. It's a pretty cool comic. If you're like a decent Spider-Man comic, there's no real reason why you couldn't enjoy reading Future Quest number one either. It's the kind of comic which is worth subscribing to. Um, the writer for the comic, I hadn't re I haven't really heard of him before. I don't know all the writers in comics, but I hadn't really heard of this fellow before. It's Jeff Parker, and he's done a pretty good effort. And Evan Shaner and Steve Rude are the artists for the stuff. As you can see, the cover's pretty spiffy. Pretty spiffy cover. And um, Future Quest, it's it's a, it's a kind of... look look looks very promising. It's It's got a bl uh, pretty much a blockbuster ending at the end of the comic. And um, it, it revolves... This revol first issue revolves around... Um, Aliens, I think, coming to Earth and a, a main guy, I don't think it's Dr. Quest, it's some sort of hero. I'm not 100% I'm not sure on all the history of it. This bloke at the end is, is coming to Earth and his adventures, whoever he is, is probably going to be on Earth and involved in the Quest group. That's the same guy as on the cover. I'm not sure if he was part of the traditional Johnny Quest stuff or the Future Quest stuff, but um, it, it's, it's really, really quite a good comic. Um, it's sort of action, a little bit science fiction-y. Uh, there's not really any comical e elements, apart from light humor with the kids. But, um, yeah, it's a great comic. You know, it's it's something which, if you're 25, if you're 45 and you like comics, you can still read it and enjoy it. So, you know, Future Quest number one, would I recommend it? Yeah, I'd recommend it. I'd recommend this kind of comic you could subscribe to and be happy enough reading. Is it a huge investment item? Normally, probably not. I don't think you're going to get your, you know, a huge return on your your poly bag, acid board, back, board backed copy of Future Quest number one stored for 30 years anytime soon. But you never know. But is it a kind of comic which you can read and enjoy reading and be happy enough to own? Yeah, it's a good, a good enough comic. Future Quest number one from DC Comics, would I recommend it? Yeah. Out of 10, I suppose, maybe. 7, 8 out of 10. If you really like it, maybe a bit higher. But it's a solid, good read and worth getting. Future Quest number 1 from DC Comics.